a registered dietitian and I work with the YMCA of Greater Cleveland and Thrive Southern Lorain County. And today we're going to be doing a recipe using apples. Um, one thing that's great about apples is there are a lot of them available at this time of year. And I like them because they can be stored in the refrigerator for a long period of time. Some fruit like berries, you can only keep them so long, but apples, they're, they can be stored for several weeks in your refrigerator. And one tip though about apples is, if, I don't know if any of you have ever heard, but the phrase, one rotten apple can spoil the whole bunch. And that's actually true if you have one really heavily bruised or damaged apple, you wanna throw, you wanna throw that one away because it can actually, um, it produces this ethylene gas that causes rapid um, ripening, but it leads to rotting more quickly too. So if you want to keep apples for a long time, keep them only the fresh ones with, you know, a good skin on them. Um, apples are also very good for you. They're high in fiber, vitamin C, potassium, and they're so versatile. You can do so many things with apples. You could slice them up, put peanut butter, Nutella on them. You can put them and chop them up and put them in salads, uh, add them to make a pie or cobbler. Uh, there's just dozens of great recipes. So today I'm doing a recipe. Um, I wanted to come up with that. I came up with a, a healthy apple oatmeal recipe. So um, trying to teach you a little bit about healthy cooking as well as trying to keep things simple. So um, what we're going to start with is um, is we first want to grease a cookie sheet. I use just a little bit of spray pan. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're baking, you don't want to add, baking is almost like a science project because you're using different ingredients that you have to have a pretty accurate amount, otherwise the science project, your recipe might not turn out so well. Versus if you are just cooking or throwing a salad together at home, you don't have to follow the exact recipe. It's not so much like baking where it's an act. Baking is often like a science experiment, like baking cookies or something like that. Um, but you don't want to grease the pan too much because it can sometimes make the cookies too flat. The other things that can make cookies too flat or they look almost watery is if you add too much oil or butter or if, you, if the pan is too hot when you put the cookies on, it'll start to flatten them right away. So you wanna start with a, a room temperature cool cookie sheet. So what we're starting with is in a large bowl, we're going to combine the honey. And I actually measured it out myself because I didn't wanna to have to bring the whole jar of honey. When you do liquid measures, like honey, water, oil, you use a, a, a cup like this. That's for liquid. If you have like a powder, like oats or something, you use these type of things, measuring cups, but you actually wanna, you can actually level them off like this so that you can get her at home. And I want, so we're starting with a half a cup of honey. Honey can be stored at room temperature. You don't have to put it in the refrigerator. So that makes it pretty easy with honey. Like I said, I normally, what I did at home was put it in one of these liquid measuring uh, cups. Like I said, there's no reason to have to put it in a bag. I just did it for convenience. So honey is just a natural sweetener, um, similar to other sweeteners, except that it's comes from bees and is more natural. Okay, so we're gonna mix the, the, the unit so you can just cut off the amount you, you want. But if not, you'd wanna measure it out in here. And for this recipe, we want it to be room temperature, slightly softened, because it'll make it easier to mix the recipe together. So I just kind of kept this out this morning. So it would be easy to do. And um, one thing you don't want to do is if you have a stick of butter, melt it to that amount because it might make your cookies too watery. So sometimes that's what happens to people if it's too watery. Um, so we have, we're going to add one egg right here. Eggs are a great source of protein, especially uh, as we're noticing prices are going up these days with meats and things like that. So eggs are one of the 
sources of protein. They're um, not as expensive as other meat sources. Uh, they're very good for you. So we're mixing the butter, one egg, and let's see, and vanilla. Vanilla makes everything taste so good. It smells so good. We're adding it to things makes it taste so good. If you actually taste it, it doesn't taste all that great. So we have our measuring teaspoon here. Pour that in. Okay. And then we have honey, butter, egg, and vanilla. And you want to cream it together. It's important to follow directions when you're, like I said, doing these recipes so that they're there's certain, it's almost like I said, a little bit of a science experiment when you're baking. So you don't want to, if it says to do recipes, like do separate bowls for the, the dry ingredients, it's a good idea to do that. But by having, I don't know if you can see this very well, by having it, the butter at room temperature, it's a little bit softened, so it makes it easier to combine it together. We call it creaming it together. Just to get a good combination. to combine some of the dry ingredients. So we have flour, and just so I didn't have to bring my big flour canister, I brought my own flour. So we need um, three fourths cup of flour. So once again, if you're measuring a, a powder or something that's not a liquid, you'd use a, a cup like this. So I'll put this in first, the uh, flour. Powder. Baking powder is something that helps the cookies to rise a little bit. So that's why we use the baking powder. That's the baking powder. So, and if you look at, they have you get a nice level scoop. It actually has most most of them come with this little edge on it, so that you really can get a nice exact amount powder and cinnamon. What's really interesting about cinnamon and other herbs and spices a lot of people don't realize is that they actually have a lot of antioxidants in them which are disease-fighting compounds. So I'm going to do one teaspoon of cinnamon. Sometimes I do a heaping teaspoon just because I really like cinnamon a lot. Um, you can add that in. Um, herbs and spices have different antioxidants. They could be dried, they could be fresh, and but they're very nutritious. So if you have any type of spices at home, they, they're great to add to food and give it more nutrition. Okay, so now we're going to chop up an apple and I'll remove the, maybe I'll bring this down here. prefer myself to use a knife and cut. Um, so to peel the apple, you could use like a, an apple peeler, or I prefer, just because I've been cooking for a long time, just to use a paring knife. But you have to be careful not to cut yourself. Okay. And you can use any type of apple you want for this recipe, so whatever <clears throat> whatever you have available in your house, you can use. I know some recipes call for more tart apples or less tart apples, but just use whatever works for you. And you can just use a small, medium apple. So these cookies have are a good source of protein. They're a good source of from the egg, a good source of fiber from the apple and from the oats. Um, they have it's always helpful to keep your cooking space clean. I'm coming back to you. So I'm get that. And you just have to be careful cutting, which might not taste right in a cookie. So just slice these up the best you can. When I'm cutting, I always put my fingers like this so that if the knife slips,
Now we're going to combine. We want to make sure to stir up the dry ingredients. That way you won't have some baking powder and too much baking powder in one part of the, the dough. Um, so you want, you'll want to stir that up really well. And then we're going to add the dry to the liquid, to the butter mixture. everything as combined as you can so that the cookies taste, each cookie tastes the same and you have that continuity especially because there's different functions it's not just taste or texture eggs are uh, help to leaven or raise the cookies the, the butter gives moisture so you really want to make sure each every cookie each and every cookie has an equal amount of the ingredients so now I'm going to mix in the apple the diced apples. And then I'm going to measure out oats. And I use the quick one minute oats because they cook very quickly. And oats are high in fiber, protein, and iron. So they're very nutritious. Okay, so we're going to do one and a half cups of oats. So because this is like a it's not a liquid, we'll use this type of measuring cup. So we'll do one. If you get too much, you can just pour it back in. Okay, there's one. And then I'll use the half cup measure. but the oats are normally dry I mean if you you never just want to eat them out the out of the box but the oats also help to absorb some of the moisture from the butter from the vanilla from the egg so it's a pretty solid dough just have to be patient. Sometimes things get stuck. It comes out. You just keep stirring. Okay. There we go. Okay. So what I like to do with this recipe is sometimes with recipes we want the dough to be a little cooler so because we're going to roll it into balls. So I, often I'll put it in the refrigerator for like 10 to 15 minutes. But because we're short on time and we don't want to have to wait around for that, I'm going to grab this lightly greased cookie sheet and I brought a little bit of flour just for my hands, which ideally if you're following the recipe, you'll be able to put the item in the, put the dough in the fridge just to cool it down, make it a little harder and less liquidy. But you want the cookies when you're rolling them to be sort of similar in size, otherwise they're not going to cook the same. If you have one really big cookie and then a really small ball, bowl of dough, they just won't cook evenly. So you want to evenly space them so that when you're when they get in the oven and they start to cook, they won't run together. Okay, so I do about. <clears throat> the size of these you can do <clears throat> whatever you want I mean you could make bigger sizes you have to cook it a little longer bake it a little longer in the oven uh, one thing too is I meant to preheat the oven as well so I'll get to that in a minute but you always want to preheat make sure the temperature is actually at the, the right amount um, because once again this is sort of like a science experiment so if you're baking you know something else maybe you're heating up a piece of chicken or something in the oven it might not be that big of a deal if you put it in while it's, you know, still preheating and not to the ideal temperature, but for, for something like this. So like I said, the dough's a little bit soft because I didn't, didn't want to take the time to put it in there. Okay. Heat, make sure the temperature is actually at the, the right amount um, because once again, this is sort of like a science experiment. So if you're baking, you know, something else, maybe you're heating up a piece of chicken or something in the oven, 
it might not be that big of a deal if you put it in while it's you know still preheating and not to the ideal temperature but for for something like this so like I said the dough is a little bit soft because I didn't, didn't want to take the time to put it in it okay. All right so what we're going to do is we'll put this batch in the oven Okay, so the oven is preheated to 350. I will put the cookies in and we're going to set the timer to have them bake for 10 to 15 minutes. And you can periodically check them, maybe after 10 minutes, depending how big you made the balls, they might need a little longer time to cook. But you know they're done if they're still soft looking, slightly brown, and it doesn't look liquidy in the middle. Taking the cookies out. They have a nice brown, kind of from the caramelization of the honey and the different ingredients. You can see the little eggs, or the little apple slices. But you want it to be kind of soft to the touch, but not where it's really mushy or liquidy. And then cool, I would cool and keep it in the pan for about five minutes just to let them kind of cool and harden a little bit. And then you can transfer to a plate um, and just, you know, let them cool a little more or eat them. And then if you want to store them, these store really well in an airtight container. So you could put them in there and then just pack them for lunches or snacks and are actually a really healthy cookie to eat. So, um, and it's just nice to have something that a lot of people often have ingredients like this at home anyway. So they're kind of easy to, to put together and eat. So thanks for giving me the opportunity to work with your class today. Hey.